speaks of Jewish values. Let me read to you a Jewish value from the Midrash Tanchuma in Shoftim. Ki teitzei lemilchama al oivecha, a verse in Deuteronomy. When you shall go out against, when you shall go out in war against your enemies. And the rabbis ask, why is it necessary to, in, to include the words against your enemies? Obviously, one doesn't go out to war against his friends. And so they say, why did they say against your enemies? Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty said, Bo Alehim Koivim, go out against them as enemies. Just as they will not have mercy upon you, thus shall you not have mercy upon them. That is Judaism. That is Judaism. Again, the Midrash. On the same verse, when I shall go out against your enemies, the rabbis say, "Imatem chomim alehem, hem yotzin lemilchama lechem." If you have pity upon them, they will go to war against you. Masha, an example. It was once a roe, a shepherd, who was tending his sheep in the forest. Matzah gura chad shalze. He found a little baby wolf. Baby wolves are cute. Baby wolves are cute. And he saw that he was, of course, without a mother. The Hamalala, he had pity on him. After all, Jew, Jews have pity on everybody. Wolves. <laughs> <clears throat> and he, he nursed him. He took a goat and he nursed him from the goat. Baba Nachto, his employer came and he saw us and he said, What are you crazy? Arogoto, kill him. Shalotiek Takala Batson. Otherwise there will be tragedy with the sheep. And he didn't listen to him because after all, the shepherds named Michael Lerner know better. After all, we have to pity upon wolves. Ivan Shegadal, when the wolf grew up, Ra Keves, Rago, he used to see a sheep and kill it. Gidi, a goat, and Ochlon ate it up. Amalo Balabayit, so the employee said to him, Lo, Lo, Lo Amalti Lecha, Lo Tachos, didn't I tell you not to pity? Kach Amalehe Moshe, similarly did Moses say, if you have pity upon them, those that you shall leave will be the sikim benechem as thorns in your eyes. That is Judaism. That is Judaism. He speaks of mercy. Indeed, Judaism is filled with mercy. Rachmanot, mercy, is one of the attributes of the Almighty. And it is indeed one of the attributes of the Jewish people. We are known as Rachmanim b'nei Rachmanim. Merciful, the children are merciful. But, the rabbis tell us, on that same verse, Lo, to, lo tachos in chalim, don't have pity on them, they said. So the Ramban says, there are two kinds of mercy. There is Rachmanut, which is mercy, which is good. And then there is Rachmanut Shot Tipshim, the mercy of fools. The mercy of imbeciles. The mercy of which the rabbis speak when they say, Kol ham rachem al ha'achzar, so foliot achzar al rachman One who has mercy upon the cruel will someday bring cruelty upon the merciful. The Torah brings down, Mr. Lerner, the Torah brings down an interesting commandment. If we find the body of a murdered Jew, 
and we do not know who the murderer is. We measure to the, to the nearest town, the nearest city, and then the elders of that city must come out to the spot and they have to proclaim publicly, Yadeinu no shafchu et adam Our hands did not shed this blood. And the rabbis of the Talmud ask, did anyone then suspect that the rabbis, the elders, who suspected them? That they have to make a declaration, we didn't do it. And reply, that's not what the point is. Of course they they didn't do the actual killing. But they have to, pro to proclaim, we did everything possible to ensure that he would not be killed. Can this pitiful creature say that? A man who calls for mercy upon cruel people, upon people who, if they could, would bring upon us a holocaust of hatchets and knives, The blood of every Jew who has been murdered in Israel is upon the heads of every foolish Jew who said, shouldn't throw the Arabs out, it's not moral, and so they remain and murder Jews. The mercy of fools and one of the greatest does not sit there. In August 24th, 1929, there were no occupied territories of 1967. And on August 24th, 1929, the Arabs in Hebron massacred 67 Jews in one day. Now, I never knew why. Until I was enlightened by people such as the missing one. I never knew what was bothering the Arabs in 1929 until I realized it was their anger over the fact that the Jews did not give up the occupied lands of 1967. <laughs> Between 1936 and 1938, there were three years of an intifada. 510 Jewish men, women, and children were, were murdered during that period. What was bothering our Ishmaelite cousins in 1936? I never realized until Michael Lerner enlightened me. If only we had given up the occupied lands of 1967, <laughs> nothing would have happened to us in 1936. And in 1947, when the United Nations proposed a partition plan which might have created a Jewish state in one Palestine, they said no. And they went to war. And 6,000 Jews died in that war, fully 1% of the population. What was born in 1947? Clearly, it was Jewish obstinacy, stubbornness, and fascism and refusing to give up the lands of 1967. And in 1967, who had the occupied lands of 1967? Certainly not Tikkun Magazine. The Arabs had it. They went to war. It does not take great genius to know that if someone has East Jerusalem and he goes to war, it might be because he wants West Jerusalem and West Tel Aviv and West Israel. And this pitiful creature who in 1967 was running around with a bandana attacking Israel as an imperialist state, a tool of capitalism. This pitiful, over, overgrown ignoramus today sits in the Bay Area and tells me to gamble on peace. And if we lose the gamble, who will suffer, Michael? We who live there, Michael, not you who live on the Bay. <laughs>